mentality, whose physical structure, whose nutritional balance, whose mental order is going to be dysfunctional. Why? Because no way man can create like the creator because man is a subject. This is our beginning. You have to say glory be to God if he revealed to his servant 1,424 years ago these facts which science has not contradicted. My dear brothers and sisters, that's our beginning. Now I want you to listen for a moment. We're going to continue this excursion. Because perhaps this may be the first time that some of you have heard this or considered it. So bear with me a moment. Now that's our beginning. No need for us to talk about what we do from childhood until adulthood. We all know that. We know the drama of life. And that drama doesn't change whether we're from Africa or from China, from America or Australia. Whether you're male or female, rich or poor, black or white, tall or short, the scenario, the drama of human development, it doesn't change. So let's go from the beginning of the world, the beginning of the human, and let's go to the end. Now that end can be characterized with a word that all of us like to avoid. You know, whenever people use the word death, they use it like in a whisper. You say, he died. We always use it like for somebody else. And even when we see people dying in war, being killed, even when we're entertained, we like to think to ourselves because they're actors, well, they're not really being killed, they're just actors. So the scenario of death doesn't really come to us. It doesn't really reach home. As the Quran says, Al takafur. the Quran says, you are busy piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth, <coughs> until you visit the graves. Think about it. When was the last time that you went to a funeral. Was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it your grandfather? Was it your uncle? Was it your cousin? Was it your friend? Was it your wife? Was it your husband? The last time that you visited the grave, when you went to a funeral and you saw that person whom you loved that was laughing, crying, live, boasting, Wealthy, educated, denying, arrogant, whatever they were. What was the demeanor of the people when you walked in that funeral home? When that person was stretched out in their last suit? What was the demeanor? Were the people cracking jokes? Were they dancing? Were they clapping and singing songs? No. Silence. 
melancholy, trauma. Why? Because every person that walked in that room, seeing that person stretched out, the first thing they thought about was not the person. The first thing they thought about was that one day, this will be me. So Allah said, Al-Hakumu Takathur, all of us, all of you are engaged in running your mouths, doing your business, multiplying, buying houses, cars, business, whatever you're doing. And when you're told about God, religion, life, morality, you're saying, look, I ain't got no time for that. I got no time for that. I don't want to hear that. I don't even believe in God. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I'm going to die. And if I do, maybe I'm coming back again. As a matter of fact, science is so sophisticated that I probably, I think really that they're on the verge of being able to uh, solve the whole thing of death soon. We ain't got to die. If we got enough money, we don't even have to die. See how arrogant people can be until they visit the funeral house. And then after you go to the funeral house, if you got the guts, if, you got the, if you're able to do so, you go to the grave. And now this is another scenario. And you say to yourself, is that it? I mean, 50, 60 years, scraping, struggling, scheming, lying, stealing, fornicating, Jumping up and down, begging, working, and this is the end of it? I mean, is this what's going to happen to me? Are they going to be dropping me into a, a hole in the ground? A hole in the ground, the same hole that a cat digs after it defecates. Just a little deeper. But for the same reason, the cat digs a hole because the cat has dignity. Something that human beings don't seem to have. Instinctively, the cat digs a little hole, covers it up. Humans have got to be taught to do that. But it's for the same reason. So you and I, we're going into a hole a little deeper than the one the cat dug. And all the people that's crying, pulling out their hair, screaming, almost acting like they're falling in the thing with you. They want to just jump in there with you. Not really, though. You know, it's all a, it's all an act. Because ain't nobody really going to jump in there and stay in there. They don't love you that much. <laughs> and then after all the shoveling, you have to all the shoveling get done and they fill it up and the, the box, you can't even see the box no more, the coffin. The coffin that costs 5000 I don't know what they, what they, what did they burn somebody in a $5,000 coffin for? I mean, if I was a funeral director, after they left, I would dig them back up and put them in another box and take that box back. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm telling you, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. So after all the money and all the drama, and they dig that hole and put you in there and cover you up, and everybody goes back to the place, uh, go back to mama's house or daddy's house or whoever's house, and, uh, you know, we cook some chicken or whatever it is, and we do a little dancing and drink some scotch and forget all about that person, and then we start... We want the lawyer to come down talking about, you know, divvying up the spoils. So if that woman who died had a husband, somebody else is going to marry him, you know that. And that man who died, you know that woman, in about six months or a year of grieving or whatever it is, she's going to come to understand that she needs somebody else to be with, so she's going to marry somebody, so that means if his suits are still in the closet and he can fit them, who going to wear them? So it really means that after all this time and the people walk away from that grave, 
It's over. 